Welcome to Plants in Paradise, a weekly show sponsored by the city of Key West to help you keep your plants and garden growing. Now, here's your host, landscape coordinator for the city of Key West, Kathy Wolf. Welcome to Plants in Paradise, a show that will explore some of the different aspects of our tropical world and the tropical plants growing in it. We talk about different subjects such as landscaping, uh, gardening, horticulture, and today our subject will be uh, lethal yellowing. A problem that has come up is affecting primarily coconut palms, but also other palms in the Florida Keys. My guest this evening is Dr. Henry Donselman, the uh, lethal yellowing specialist for the state of Florida. Thanks for coming. Pleasure to be down here tonight. Um, we have a, a program at the research center where I'm located in Fort Lauderdale where, where we've been working with lethal yellowing. We're not actively doing research now, but uh, myself as the state specialist still actively promote what we can do for our palms and how we can replant the ones we've lost and keep the ones that we still have. Mm -hmm. And this is all part of the University of Florida program out of Gainesville, mm -hmm. even though we're located in Fort Lauderdale. In Fort Lauderdale. Right. Is this a, a portion of the Cooperative Extension Service, or uh, are you working through the, the different county agencies then on this? We do work closely with Cooperative Extension, and myself, I'm a state extension specialist, mm -hmm. and so they, they actually um, give the information out to the homeowners and to the nurserymen. Right, and so forth. right. Well, can you tell me a little bit more about, uh, well, when did you become involved with the research and uh, what type of oh, information has been picked up and, and been determined through the work? I've been working on lethal yelling for seven years, mm -hmm. and um, the, the disease has been in Florida, we think, maybe since the 30s in, in the Keys, although wow. that... We, we aren't sure that that was lethal yellowing. Nobody had identified lethal yellowing at that time, uh -huh. but there was a mystery disease down here in the Keys at that time that killed quite a large number of coconut palms. It actually arrived again in the Keys then in the 50s, and it took out 75% uh, of the coconut palms in Key West. Mm. So you can see from what you have now that you can replant and regrow them because they did since then, because there are still quite a few coconut palms down here. But uh, on mainland Florida, it wasn't until late 72 and early 1973 where Lethal Young broke out in Miami mm -hmm. and um, at the same time it became a very serious problem in Jamaica. Um, first we might mention just the importance of the coconut palm because we grow them as a foliage plant actually. Right, we grow the them the tropical atmosphere. Right, for the tropical atmosphere. Mm -hmm. But worldwide the coconut palm is uh, usually ranked about as the seventh most important plant botanically in the world uh, or, or um, uh, as a food crop. As a food crop. Right, right up there with corn and wheat and, and, and rice all and all the other things they got. Right. Staples. Yeah. And, and uh, in most tropical countries, the, the coconut, if you literally translate the common names they give it, it's called the tree of life because it provides them with food, with drinking water in the coconuts, with fiber, with for uh, clothing, right? for, and, for and furnishings, and thatching, and, and so mm -hmm. forth. So it is a very important plant, and, it, uh, and uh, although we're in interested in it for our tropical atmosphere, worldwide the disease has much more implications, greater implications. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, though, the disease broke out seriously in, in late 72 in, in mainland Florida, and since that time it's destroyed 90% of the coconut palms in Dade County and about 80% of those in Broward County and about 60% in mm. Palm Beach County. Uh, luckily, um, and it's not active now on the West Coast in the Naples, Collier County, Lee area. County area. Yeah. Right. Well, I've noticed, I think, that the Keys are experiencing a, a recent outbreak or, uh, you know, uh, more late uprising in the, in the disease and its occurrence. Is this happening on the mainland also? It seems to be that it, it comes in peaks and... and uh, it's, it's, it's um, the disease is much, acts much differently in the Keys than on the mainland. In the mainland, it sweeps through the area, mm -hmm. takes out almost all of the coconuts, and then disappears. It takes out other varieties of palms, too, but ma mainly coconuts. And uh, in the Keys, it tends to jump around from island to island, come and go. Um, the, as we get into what causes it, maybe we'll see some reasons, reasons why that. for that. For that, right. mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, Dr. Donselman brought some slides, and uh, should we 
take a we, look at some of those? We can. What the first thing I'd like to do is go over the symptoms so that people living in the Keys in Monroe County can determine whether or not their palm tree has lethal yellowing, and then if it does, what steps they can take. Okay. Maybe we should mention at this time that the coconut palms are not the only palms affected right. by lethal yellowing. The other most common palm in, in the Keys that would be affected would be the Christmas palm or adenidia. Mm -hmm. And then the, the fan palms, Fiji Island fan palms, there are some down here. Mm -hmm. Those are the most common in this area, although there are 29 uh, palms on our 29 different. List. Wow. Right. Okay. If we can have the slides then, we'll discuss these. This first slide uh, illustrates what typically is the first symptom of lethal yellowing, and we term this shelling. Shelling just means that the, the coconuts, or uh, the, the nuts on the tree, all fall off, not just the mature ones, but all sizes. And generally, um, where the coconut is attached to the tree, they'll be, it'll become black and, and soft. Mm -hmm. So if you see shelling in a tree, now it's, it, it, this isn't definitive for lethal yellowing. There are other things that can cause this to occur. But if lethal yang is prevalent in the area and you see this occurring to your tree, you should be very, very suspicious that this tree has lethal yang. Um, in this next slide, we'll see a way that you can diagnose lethal yang positively. And what this is, this is an unopened flower uh, space, the unopened inflorescence of a coconut. And if you can reach or, or get up to the end of the crown of a coconut and cut one open that hasn't, cut one off that hasn't opened, and then slit it and open it up. If there are black and necrotic areas in, on these flowers that have, have not yet come out, uh, that uh, tells you right then that this definitely is lethal yellowing. This is before the tree shows any symptoms of yellowing in the leaves or, or um, uh, a flag leaf or any of the other things. In fact, this next symptom that we see is what we call a flag leaf. And in 60% of the cases, you'll find a leaf in the if you were to think of a picture of a coconut as a clock in the 10 o'clock position or a 2 o'clock position, these are those uh, one leaf turning yellow with green leaves above it and green leaves below it, that's termed a flag leaf. That too is, is fairly, uh, you can be fairly certain it's lethal yellowing unless it would be associated with some other problem like being planted too close to a power line or something which could cause this too. Right. How many trees uh, roughly percentage-wise show the symptom and, and others uh, that may how many others may have just the lower fronds beginning to turn yellow? Okay, in over half the cases, this, you'll find this flag leaf. And in the others, you won't. In those, you'll just find a gradual yellowing of the older leaves and then a browning, and they collapse. There's, uh, the leaves don't wilt. They actually just fall straight down from the base of the trunk uh, and, and hang on for a very short time. Once the leaves are, um, once the plants have, have died, the last stage then we call the telephone pole stage because all that's left is the trunk, no leaves attached. If there are still leaves attached, then you can pull on these leaves and if, if you can swing on them like, a, like Tarzan on a vine, you know it's not lethal yellowing because with lethal yellowing, the leaves pull off very easily. So if you grab a hold of them and they come down, then that again is a symptom of lethal yellowing. This is uh, looking inside a, a diseased coconut palm, um, looking at the individual cells. You'll see these round bodies in here. This is the organism that causes lethal yellowing. For years, we didn't know what it was, whether it was a fungus or a bacteria or insects or nutrition or whatever. But we've since then, and mm -hmm. since with, with better uh, scientific uh, equipment and so forth, been able to identify these as mycoplasmas. And that's a relatively new, it's only been known to science to cause plant diseases for about 12 years. Uh, a mycoplasma is very similar to a bacteria, a very tiny bacteria, although most bacteria have what we call a second uh, layer on them called a cell wall, that, so that they're usually rod-shaped or spiral-shaped or, or something. Spiral. Right, well these don't, so they look kind of uh, like uh, amoebas. Where, oh, excuse me, That's where was the mycoplasma discovered? Was that part of the work that you were it doing? Part, it was found in Jamaica, in Great Britain, and at Fort Lauderdale all simultaneously. Ah. So, yeah. This last slide of this set shows the insect that spreads lethal yellowing. And this is a plant hopper. It feeds on the underside of the coconut leaves. It's very, very tiny, less than a quarter of an inch long. So these are greatly enlarged here. You see the clear wings. 
Um, this plant hopper has a piercing mouthpiece and it feeds on the sap of the coconut palm. That's called, the sap is called the phloem and the phloem is where we find those mycoplasmas. So it's very uh, analogous to say how malaria is spread in humans, a, a mosquito, mosquito feeding, right, feeding on a diseased person and then going to a healthy and spreading it. Well, the, the uh, plant hopper does this very, uh, in a very similar fashion. Is there any way to control the insect to prevent it from feeding on the tree? We have done tests on that, and unfortunately, we feel that the effects on the environment are so great that it doesn't warrant going and doing aerial spraying or spraying with you know, a homeowner to spray his tree. He would have to do it weekly at least, and it just isn't warranted. Uh, there are other ways and better things we can do. To do. Uh -huh. You also mentioned yesterday, we were talking a little bit about the plant hopper, uh, the relationship with St. Augustine grass. I thought that was interesting. Right. This, this uh, plant hopper has two life cycles and, and, and what it does is it goes down into the uh, grass and lays its eggs and the young plant hoppers feed on the roots of the grass and uh, then when they mature they fly up to the coconut palms or other palms to feed on them and their preferred uh, plant host when they're young is St. Augustine grass and they don't prefer, say, Bahia grass or some of the other ones, and we think that that may be one of the reasons, for example, the west coast of Florida has less lethal yellowing because there's less St. Augustine over there. There are fewer numbers of this insect. And it may also t deal or t uh, tell us a little bit why the erratic spread down here. Some islands have it, and, a lot of St. Augustine, and others don't, don't. so forth. We've now seen slides of the different symptoms of lethal yellowing. Maybe a review of, I guess there are three major uh, things that show up in a palm tree if it has lethal yellowing. Right. The things that you need to be aware of is first, shelling, which is loss of the uh, coconuts on the, on the tree, all sizes from uh, small egg-sized fruit to, to the mature ones, probably with a blackening on the end. The next would be perhaps a flag leaf. Uh, a flag leaf appearing at the 2 or 10 o'clock position in the crown of the coconut. Um, then the inflorescences, the flowers, the, the things that look like corn tassels on the tree, when mm -hmm. they open up, they open up blackened on the tip. Or if you cut open an unopened one, it will be blackened Black inside. Blackened on the end. Then the, the, the final stages are, now we're getting to where you're seeing leaves yellowing, is yellowing of the older leaves, uh, the leaves falling down. If you grab those leaves and pull on them, you can pull them right off. They don't stick on the tree. Um, that, there are a lot of other problems where, uh, that affect coconuts. And if you can hold on to that and it'll support your weight, you know it's not lethal yellow. It's not lethal yellow. Right. So and that's usually the last symptom when, when it's obvious, right. very visible, the tree is sick. By the time you have a telephone pole left, you know. <laughs> You've got you've it. You've got it. <laughs> right. Okay. I think we'll take a break here. I'd like to... Uh, uh, welcome you to Plants in Paradise and hope you tune back in where we have Dr. Henry Donselman, the state of Florida, lethal yellowing specialist. He has some more slides and more information on lethal yell yellowing in coconut palms. <laughs> Welcome back to Plants in Paradise. Dr. Donselman has told us a little bit about the symptoms of the plant that has lethal yellowing, and I think we'll talk now about what can someone do if, if they notice these symptoms in their tree. Great. 
What you see here, Kathy, on the, on the television is a uh, low-pressure injector. It's called a Moget injector, and it's used to inject antibiotics into coconut palms. We found through our research that if you inject the antibiotic tetracycline into a coconut at four-month intervals, you can, the tree will remain disease-free. Um, the, the antibiotic and the injectors and the information is available from the Monroe County Cooperative Extension Service. And so if people are interested in this program, they, they can obtain information from them. And their office is located on Stock Island in the county offices to uh, help people locate them. Right. Now, we don't recommend widespread re uh, um, injections of coconut palms for a whole entire area. We recommend uh, from the, the, uh, the state we recommend to inject only palms that you think are very uh, worthwhile in the landscape. For example, the beaches where the tourists might come or a particular beautiful planting in, in a certain yard or park or whatever. But if you're just, uh, 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 if you have an average house like mine with say two or three coconuts, rather than replant, or rather than inject, we recommend that you Putting replant. Putting in some young ones. And there are many palms that you can uh, plant uh, to replace coconuts. This, is, this list is just a very um, uh, short list of some of the palms that are available from nurseries uh, that can be used to replant. If you're uh, this list also, by the way, is available from Cooperative Extension, which has pictures of the palms and tells you how to help select them. But if you're interested specifically in coconuts, then we recommend that you go either to the Malayan dwarf, particularly the green variety. There are three varieties, the green, the gold, and the yellow. Uh, or go to the Maypan. This is a grouping of Ma a Malayan dwarfs in Miami growing at Fairchild Tropical Gardens, which is a large palm collection up there. Within the, the uh, Malayan dwarf group, the, the different kinds, uh, the, the, the one in the foreground is a golden Malayan, and you notice how it looks kind of hungry. It, it, it uh, looks like somebody forgot to fertilize, fertilize it. Right. right. Actually, the palm's perfectly happy. It's just as healthy as the one in the background. It, uh, that's just its characteristics. That's the way it grows. It's if you, a, a genetic right. thing then. Right. If you than give it additional fertilizer, you can make it very green. But if you don't, this is the way your golden Malayans and, and probably your yellow Malayans will look. The, the plant that's in the background is a green Malayan dwarf. Same care, same water and everything. So you can see the difference and, and why we would recommend, if at all possible, get a green Malayan dwarf. Although the resistance to lethal yellowing and so forth is identical. In, yeah. in both strains. Right. I've heard on occasion that people are a little hesitant to plant the Malayan dwarfs because they're afraid that the tree won't reach a, a very large size. By dwarf, what do you mean? Okay, well, be, uh, the, the name dwarf is a misnomer. It actually comes about because the, um, the Malayan dwarf begins fruiting when it's four years old. The coconuts actually lay on the ground. The plant is so small. Whereas the Jamaican tall, the, the common one that was in, in the Keys, the one that gets lethal yawing, took seven years. The Jamaican tall could reach uh, maybe 80 feet to 100 feet at the most. The Malayan dwarf will reach uh, 60 to 70 feet. So it's not really a dwarf. It is a little bit smaller in proportion, but it gets but to be still, we large But still, we grow very large. Right. Then the, the newest one that, that we've been recommending is a palm we call the May Pan, and that's a hybrid. And that's the taller of the palms in this picture. Down uh, the sway a little bit on this golf course are some Malayan dwarfs that are exactly the same age as this tall palm here, the hybrid maypan. And just as in hybrid vegetables and flowers and so forth, we have hybrid vigor. Uh, the, this coconut also has more vigor, and it'll grow in um, less suitable sites. Uh, it'll take more abuse. Grow, it'll grow with less fertilization, although it still likes to be well, fed. And one thing as all plants we, right, one do. thing we we. Um, forget is that these new varieties of coconuts don't grow without fertilization as the old common Jamaican tall did. So they do take a little more right. care, no matter whether it's a Malayan dwarf or maypan. Right. And, and um, the, the maypan is, is actually created in, in Jamaica where they cross Malayan dwarfs with Panama talls, um, and then the seeds from those are, are sent over here and germinated, and that's where we get the maypan. So if you want a coconut, I would recommend either green Malayan dwarf or a maypan. Maypans do not come true from seeds, so you cannot collect maypan seeds off a of maypan. You'll get all a You'll get a, a different right. range of, but of the Malayans, on the other hand, you could plant the seed and be reasonably sure of getting right. 
a Malayan right. tree. Malayan dwarfs come true from seed, and especially if you choose younger trees, which have been just more recently imported from Jamaica, say in the last five years or six years, you can be sure that you'll have good resistant palms from those nuts that you germinate. Okay. Uh, Dr. Donselman has with him one of the injectors that can be used to treat a tree that uh, has lethal yellowing. Let me um, explain briefly how this works. Very simply, you, you drill a hole into the trunk of the coconut and you in insert this needle, uh, this plastic needle, into the hole. You then put the antibiotic in this capsule uh, with the uh, required amount of water, and this is all detailed in the extension pamphlet on how to inject your coconut palms. Uh, you place the cap on it, and then you pressurize it by pushing these together. And I can't do it like this, I don't think, but if you step on it, that's the way we usually do it. It will, these two will push down and it pressurizes the contents. Then when you place this on the coconut and push hard, it breaks a seal in here so that the antibiotic uh, flows out of the capsule uh, through the injector, injector into, the, down into, the, into tree. the coconut. It's real important you put it in this position. A lot of, I've seen people put it like this and it, when it's upside down and you're injecting mm -hmm. only air. So you make sure it's like that. After uh, two days, this capsule should be empty. If it's not empty, then uh, it probably would pay to go back and re-inject because something's happened that something in, in the injection. Keeping it from it's also out. important uh, every four months you're repeating this that you move these holes around and don't do them too close to each other to the previous injection. So you don't want to use the same hole right. time after time. Right, right. All right. You had mentioned that the Malayan dwarfs and the maypans require a little more care than the Jamaica talls did. Right. And I think you have some slides on that. Right. In this last set of slides, we're going to look a little bit about nutrition and, and taking care of your palms and, and uh, just see um, uh, some of the things we can do to make these palms, uh, re re to help these palms to restore what we've lost. Okay. Okay. One of the um, uh, most important things is, is the nutrition of the palms. and. Um, since coconut, we've mentioned it's a very important food crop worldwide. Uh, apparently, in the past, uh, fertilizer companies have used fertilizer formulations for coconuts that were developed for the production of the coconuts themselves. Uh, here in Florida, we don't care about the coconuts. We cut them off because of the hurricanes and everything else. And so, so um, we've re-evaluated fertilizer formulations and actually came up with another one whereas where we are now more particularly interested in the foliage of the coconut. And, and the overall appearance, the appearance rather than how many seeds are produced. Right, and that's what uh, you, uh, you see here, this palm tree special. This is a, a 10-5-5, which is a, a 2 one, one ratio of fertilizer. Uh, it has a, a fast, a slow, and a medium release nitrogen source. It is, um, has uh, twice as many microelements, which are very deficient in, in, the, in the keys. Key soil. Right. And, uh, uh, gives the palm the nutritional needs that, that it really needs. In uh, an experiment with, that we did, um, actually it was on Key Biscayne at Crandon Park uh, up, in my, up in Dade County. We went out and we, we took a group of palms in the park of Malayans that were really pretty neglected. We'll see a picture in a minute. But um, first, what we did is we went out and we took uh, five to seven pounds of, of this fertilizer and we spread it around the base of the trunk. 18 inches from the trunk in a, a, a circle about a foot and a half or two foot wide. We don't recommend in, uh, uh, making holes in the ground and injecting it down in fertilizer into the soil. Uh, it's not as effective. What we do recommend is, is heavily mulching the palms with seaweed or wood chips or something like this. Uh, after, uh, in, at the in, uh, initiation of uh, when we initiated this experiment, this is the way the palms look, and you can see. Mm, they, they do look a little pretty hungry. sad. Yeah, they were they, they were <laughs> receiving. Actually, they said they were receiving irrigation, and they were fertilizing them uh, whenever they fertilized the grass, which I think is went every hundred years or something like that. But actually, uh, what we did, we gave them two fertilizations at four month intervals. After seven months, these palms looked like this, and you can see Beautiful. that. Beautiful. Look right. at the the difference. They grew over five feet taller than the con the control groups, the groups that didn't receive fertilizer. And it was just, a, uh, and, and we've done this test in, in every county. Uh, we've tried it and it works. It's just fertilization in Malayan dwarfs. They're just, they, they are not as able to 
absorb nutrients as well as the old Jamaican tall, and so we have to give them a little more. And they respond very quickly. Respond I mean, very, very quickly. There's a difference in, in no time at all, then. And we're talking of, of a cost approximately about um, somewhere between a dollar fifty or two dollars a palm per year. Just for, uh, that would be the fertilizer cost. The fertilizer that you help to formulate then is available commercially. People right. can buy it through nurseries or plant supply um, businesses. But if it isn't, uh, you can have just as good a result by getting a high quality turf fertilizer. Fertilizer for Again, grasses. Again, heavy in nitrogen. Heavy in nitrogen, and make sure it's complete with all the micro elements: the copper, the zinc, the manganese, magnesium, and so forth. So, um, in, in concluding this, I'd like to, to mention there's a lot that can be done in the Keys, and, and luckily the Keys have planted a lot of Malayan dwarfs in the past. So you're never going to lose everything all like, the we, coconuts, all like the we have in, in, in Broward County, or like Dade County has. And I think it's real fortunate that you've got these Malayans already started, and I hope people here can really uh, re-emphasize the importance of this planting, because we don't want the Keys to look like uh, uh, Orlando. We want to be special <laughs> down here. Special when people come to Disney World, they have to have a reason to come down here. And if we look no different, then uh, I think that's a real reason why people do want to come and visit us here. Dr. Donson, and you've talked about symptoms of lethal yellowing and how people can treat that, or in this case, I guess you're recommending replanting and taking care of the new tree. Where can people find more information on the things that you've talked about? There are many pamphlets available from Cooperative Extension, such as uh, lethal yellowing, a history, palms resistant to the disease, uh, new palms for Florida, which, which is an exciting area that perhaps another time we can talk about right, new things, right. how to plant a palm tree, fertilizing, uh, the different deficiencies that are very common down here. In, uh, that, that occur and how to correct them. To and these are them. all available from the Cooperative Extension Office. Great, the as county. is the, the injectors. And, and the I antibiotics. Under, and I understand they also have a seed program where you can go in and place orders for uh, Malayan dwarfs, I believe, right. is what they're selling. Good program. Dr. Donselman, thank you very much for driving all the way down from Fort Lauderdale and joining us in the Keys. Pleasure. I hope you have a nice day here in town. I enjoy it. And thank you for tuning in to Plants in Paradise. And uh, I'm Kathy Wolf, and hope you'll come back again next week. Plants in Paradise is sponsored by the City of Key West. Gardening product brand names are used for informational purposes only. Such mention does not constitute an endorsement of a product over others that may do the same job while used in a similar manner. Questions or comments on today's show can be sent to this station, Telecommunications Incorporated, 1700 North Roosevelt Boulevard, Key West, Florida, 33040.